anyway, let's let's talk about that demo. <laughs> um, th- this is something I kind of gleamed even from uh, even from the trailer, but definitely playing it hands on, it's it's kind of solidified. This feels infinitely more um, action oriented than seven. Like seven was like very purposely clunky, like with, with even like the the camera speed, the movement speed, like. Every, even like every little gun as you're walking with it, it has like this super crazy exaggerated sound effect with it um but this just plays yeah. so smooth and it's not necessarily going to be like a call of duty shooter but it's definitely more oriented for for action even the uh like menu controls feel like they're more ready for you to just like okay back in the game like when i was going to craft ammo and uh, health the only thing that stopped me from jumping back and forth was not realizing what uh, what was the counter for how many supplies you have and whether you can craft it or not. Like, I thought I was using something up when I wasn't. But, mm-hmm. like, the actual going back and forth in the menus, getting back to the game, was all so snappy and quick. Along mm-hmm. with the shooting and reloading and everything else. The, um, the, the vibe I'm kind of getting from the... I guess I was already kind of getting it from the trailer, but also this. Um, it looks like they're taking the best of both worlds and that it's going to have the atmosphere of seven and still have like those stalker type enemies. Like we saw from that first demo um, mm-hmm. with the vampire lady chasing you around, but it, it's also taking basically the gameplay formula of four, which I'm all down for. Yeah. And it, and I, I don't know what triggers it. I, I, I I'm guessing it's uh, a parry window, but you can, you can parry attacks. You so can? You're, you're, yeah, so it's it's not just um you're not just mitigating damage when you block, um but if if because I did I pulled it off a couple times you do it at the right time you just straight up push them away from you. Really? Yeah. Because I saw that crazy. they they because they because I saw that they implemented, you know how Resident Evil 7's aiming system was like the precursor to Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake. Mm-hmm. This feels like an evolution of two and three remake. Like they have the whole if you take if you slow down and take shots, you have better aim. But your aim shot to shot doesn't feel quite as bad as it did in like they don't. It seems they want you to still take your time for critical shots, but they don't want you to feel like you have to do that at every moment. They want you to be able to like no, you're going to be getting caught in a firefight every once in a while. You're going to have to go pop pop pop. Mm-hmm. Which I think uh, is th- interesting as hell. I. I was actually interested to see how they were going to implement um, that, that DLC from Resident Evil 7, the Not a Hero, because when you're playing as Chris, you don't even have to worry about like the um, the reticule going small. Like it's it's just all oh yeah, like aiming down sights. It's it's a lot more action. It was a shooting gallery essentially, which I thought was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had something you wanted to say, Corey? I was going to say um, no. I I I really did uh, enjoy. So far, what we've seen of the first level of the demo, um, it was funny because uh, Ish was literally counting down for me uh, the 30 minutes that I have. And he's like, every time I would slow down to read like a piece of paper or something <laughs> on a table, he's like, OK, come on. We don't have time to sightsee. I was like, what? I want to try and absorb as much as I can. Minutes left, Corey. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> I, I felt so rushed for it because like the entire time, like because I was streaming it also. So I'm just like. I want I want to get as much of this out of that as I can, but I want to be entertaining. But mm-hmm. it was um, like usually in like ev- every game I play, I take my sweet time. I want to look at like every little nook and cranny. Even there's not necessarily items. Mm-hmm. Like apparently there's a shotgun and a lo- and a landmine that yeah. I just did not find. Y'all so, didn't find the shotgun, huh? I found no. the shotgun. Okay, so I okay, went. Wait, where I was, was running. I was running away from the wolves, and it's literally the house next to the house that you go to where you find what's her name elena elena right and her and her father it's literally like the house left of that and i went in and i found like ammo and like a gunpowder and like a landmine and a shotgun and i was like oh i didn't find the landmine (laughs) but i was also having issues with my brightness then so i could have just missed it yeah uh the shotgun didn't do much because it had one shell in it Yep. And then I I uh, I accidentally placed the landmine in a very tricky position, and then I picked it up and never got to use it again. And then I just start, and then I just ran. I didn't even kill any enemies because one, I kept missing. I'm a terrible shot, and because I have to, I have to like get used to first person Resident Evil all over again. And so I'm like missing just by like centimeters. 
Mm-hmm. all around the enemies and then i'm just like you know what screw this i'm running <laughs> and i ran to that <laughs> i ran to that house it, it oh was what was sticking out to me that uh I, maybe i just haven't played a console shooter in, in a hot minute because i was just potato aim all over the place missing every shot <laughs> i managed to kill uh one of the werewolves with, with just my pistol and then i got halfway through the second one before i had to just pull out my knife and it's just like a complete war of attrition just like how many times can i heal versus how many times can i poke him um pro tip getting into a knife fight with a werewolf's not a great idea <laughs> um yeah. it, it didn't occur to me mentally for whatever reason just like hey you can probably just run away from this fight and sure enough the second you get close to that house um the werewolves just the one that was chasing me just like despawned from like right behind me just to like start that little cutscene or whatever but so at least i know that for when i play the base game they just don't waste uh 20 bullets it definitely um i will say this much the demo it there were multiple areas that i felt like uh clearly they are this is a piece of the game that they're really restricting a lot because there were like areas that i feel like you could you could have gone through like there were other gates i feel like you could have opened or gone through oh, uh, by parts. um by louisa's house i was confused because on the map it shows that there's like this pathway but it was like blocked by a barrel or um, yeah like, like some stuff so they literally they they just they knew what they were doing when they made these demos basically it's oh, like yeah. they they literally are shoving the player into a 30 minute linear like do this puzzle uh, uh, encounter encounter these enemies, go through these cutscenes, and then you're done. Solve this yeah. puzzle, you're then you're done. And it's like that's that's actually brilliant. Like, it, I mean, obviously you can go and you can separate uh, levels of a game if you know you have all the assets. You just literally separate levels of a game, and then you just cut off any other progress uh, pathways that you can to just shove the player through uh, a, a, an intended experience. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it was smart in that and like in, in the creation of demos, that was kind of a a smart design. What did you think of um Ethan is so much more emotive and talkative in here than he was in seven. Like seven he had like some kind of grunts like whenever he'd get like slashed by a chainsaw or whatever. I think and, like, he's just he had, tired of this shit, man. <laughs> he he is so tired. fed up. He's just like, why is this shit happening to me? This village is fucked. What the fuck is going on? Like, I, I honestly, for a second thought, it was Troy Baker. I thought it sounded like him, but it's, um, shoot, I didn't type down the name. Let me look it up real quick, but it's Dude, not Troy Resident Baker. Seven. Yeah, it's the same person. Seven, um... While you're, while you're looking that up, Corey, when you were in that house where you found the shotgun, did you notice that you could press X on a dresser that was like by the door where you came in? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I was trying to like I even shoved the oh, I did shove that dresser. Like I saw it and then I was like I ran out and lured the the werewolves out of that house because I was getting surrounded and then I like looped back around them and went back in and like mashed uh mashed my like whatever button the action button is on playstation um uh and then and like i shoved the dresser in there so it stopped them momentarily but then there was a boarded up window that another one came crashing through in that house so it i didn't, didn't know really that was a them. thing because because when i fought them i just kind of stayed in the fields i, I didn't even think about uh, going nah, back dude, to that they house. are scary they are scary even if you block even if you block yourself off in like a house they will literally claw their way in any it, by any means necessary like um i'm just saying house you find a shotgun in you can block a door what's that <laughs> remind you of Brings- <laughs> yep yep R- not R- wrong. R- yeah. that's true it's, it's like there's de- it's like the developers at capcom are specifically trying to drive me insane <laughs> wait what but what's wrong with resident evil 4 Nothing's wrong with Resident Evil 4. It's just the fact that I keep letting go of these crazy theories I have, and then little things like that happen, and I'm like, but what if? <laughs> but what if? <laughs> but what if I'm not crazy? I am. Uh, sure I have a. F- and also, here's the thing. Like, I already know that Chris Red. We already know that Chris Redfield from the beginning is a big part of it because he was like, you know, he was the big surprise at the end of Resident Evil 7. However, I have a feeling that they're going to try and one up themselves and have a another original Resident Evil character cameo in this game. I just don't know who that might be. Who would you, who I mean, do you think would be overdue for an appearance? 
I mean, I know who I think is overdue for an Barry. Jose, do you have any? Barry <laughs> motherfucking Burton. <laughs> yes, no, that is true. Well, no, Barry Burton got to be in Revelations 2, a game that I have not played past the first episode. You know, I, I, I would, I, my, my legit answer was going to be Claire because what was it? She was in two, um, Veronica, and then I, I kind of constantly forget that Revelations, she was in Revelations is even a thing. Too, yeah, yeah. She, she was in two. Yeah. I would say Jill. I would say Jill because she's hardly, I mean, she was in Revelations 1, but like. She's Chris's w- bud, too. As, so. as far as a. A playable character she got she got resident evil one, one. she got resident evil three and then and then rev and the revelations and then i guess if you count the like the extra mode where you play as her oh the little the dlc rev- thing yeah the five. dlc for resident evil five and i guess that, that counts was great. yeah um then I, yeah i guess that counts but still like i feel like she's definitely overdue for like some good uh, game placement because every game that she's been placed in periodically just doesn't do well not because of her character or who she is it's literally just wrong place wrong time yeah. for, the, for the record for five five generally does not do jill much justice especially in her boss was, that's what i'm saying she deserves like an actual chance to be in the spotlight she, like, she was a badass she, she was a badass in the three remake freaking shoving um that rail gun just like right in nemesis's face just blowing him up Oh yeah. yeah, this is true. But like again, marketing wise, Resident Evil Three was really just like kicked to the t- kick to the curb, both with the original and the remake. It wasn't as popular as the second one. Mm-hmm. So it- it's just like she deserves to be in a game that's actually going to be like successful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, she wasn't in six, so I th- I guess she got a favor done in her in her corner. Um, I think I agree with you. Because it's weird, it's like, Resident Evil 3, the original, got a rough deal because that was the whole, it was meant to be a spin-off and then was forced to be a mainline sequel, and I love it, but I know that there are people maybe that it wasn't exactly what they were expecting when Code Veronica was more like the next step in the series, and then, and then, um, sorry, I was getting someone started in chat, but, um, <laughs> um, that's, but then, that's, like, in the uh, that would be... Three, that would be my boyfriend, by the way. <laughs> oh, hi, Ish. We love you, Ish. Wesker still lives. Hashtag the truth is out there. Hashtag I want to believe. Hashtag the sunglasses don't lie. Hashtag um, <laughs> the volcano was an... I, I don't know. Um, the Resident Evil 3 remake had also the rough deal of like when we found out that apparently that was supposed to be packaged with Resident Evil 6. I'm sorry, Resident Evil 2. And that God, that would have improved Resident Evil 6. <laughs> but um I, I a lot of things would have improved that game, that game. <laughs> i can't talk that much shit about it i haven't played it i know okay. it's on sale though it's so i i give you permission I don't um it. jose let me like eight bucks uh but <laughs> <laughs> but um but no where was i going with this oh um but it has it had and you know like resident evil 3 remake is not perfect i really enjoyed it but again like it wasn't perfect it wasn't even a as much as I loved it first playing it, I have to kind of concede like it was not an amazing remake of the original game. Right. And it was funny. It's funny because like. I, wasn't there something there was something like fairly recently where people were like, release a director's cut of Resident Evil 3, the remake, because we we deserve more content than that. I, <laughs> just, I mean, and I mean, <laughs> that's a little pro- entitled. I know it's, it is a little entitled, but it's like they it's cut so out, they cut out whole levels. Like the clock tower level was like one of the best levels in that game. I and know. they completely I'm, I'm, cut it. I'm going to say my piece on it. And then we'll, we'll get into some of the other stuff, but um, I don't know. Like it, I, for what Blaine was saying, it, it's, the Resident Evil 3 remake is basically doing exactly what Resident Evil 3 did and that people didn't like it as much. It's kind of like the weird black sheep in that regard. And yeah. for what it's worth, just that game as an isolated experience is it's it's a hell of an experience. It's it for sure is. It, it's a it's a damn good game. It, it's not the same I, I don't want to call Resident Evil 2 like Metroidvania, but just for the sake of the, that conversation where you know you're constantly going back and forth. There's light elements in that three, but it's far more linear, but Damn good game. Uh, I will say, because Chai Bum is asking in the chat about there's director's cuts in video games. I don't think director's cuts exist anymore. I think director's cuts of video games 
were an early concept when video yeah. games were still er, like babies. You know, when uh, it was still it, early somebody the- hasn't played Sonic Adventure DX on the Nintendo GameCube, Corey. <laughs> there's also Resident <laughs> Evil, the director's cut. That no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Mode. When game, when video games were young, then they, they, there definitely was a, a merging of ideas yeah. and and phrasing within the video game company that people probably who worked in the film company were transferring their knowledge over to. Because um, a lot of early video games sort of take on cinematic. Yeah. Uh, you know cinematography at their time um and and as time has gone on we've seen video games it just become more and more cinematic but we don't have director's cuts of video games really anymore hashtag release think of Oh, hashtag, re- on, hashtag release a Snyder Cut Resident Evil 3 remake. <laughs> oh I uh, want a 12 hour game. I want an <laughs> <laughs> or no, I want a 50. I want sorry, not 12 hours. I want like 50 hours. I want an I want like a Resident Evil oh, 3 <laughs> experience. All right. And, we, nem- we and Nemesis gets crucified at the end because it's a yeah. Jesus allegory. Um <laughs> All right, Blaine, uh, say your piece so we gotta move on. My brain fucked up. I don't even remember what I was gonna say. Hold hold on. I might be able to reclaim it. Oh, um, not Fear Effect. Um, Fatal Frame 2, I think, is the last instance I can think of of a game that got a director's cut. The Xbox release, if I remember correctly, was called Fear... Uh, I keep wanting to say Fear Effect because I'm too obsessed with that game. Um, was Fatal, Fatal Frame 2, uh, b- whatever, Butterfly, and then director's cut. Um, I used to own it. I actually gave it to a friend. Well, sold it to a friend. For a yeah, it's, it's it's sort of like it, it, it's sort of like uh, back then. It, it's it's different. The way that video games are made now are are definitely different than video games were made then. And I feel like maybe the director of a video game had more of a say of like like okay, you guys made the original. Like uh, here, how about I go back into the editing room. Or you know the you know the game making room whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, I mean, and just, <laughs> and just like you know, is, do a, a cut of my own. So well, and the term is so nebulous even in the film industry. Like as well as like the the director's cut of Blade Runner that's not even really a director's cut. It's like an editor's cut. Mm-hmm. And you know, but we we could literally sit here all day talking 